Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Life Gorgeous. My name is Craigers. This is where I share my magical life in hopes of improving your life. I like this. I like getting haircuts, getting the short hair, not touching it, just off the satin pillow, coffee, Bill Evans, cashmere sweater, boom. Low maintenance when the hair is short. This is a solo Kilby podcast with fan questions. I haven't answered some questions in a while. It's also the second podcast this week because I believe the Christmas week I'll be taking off. I want to make sure I give you guys an extra podcast. We'll answer some fan questions. Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> this is me giving the my editor a nice uh, thumbnail face shot of Kilby. <sighs> First question, Kilby. Heard you with Maggie Lawson talking about walking through your neighborhood while you're exercising and listening to music with your headphones on. You said you dream. You opened up and said you dream. And sometimes you extend your arm. Exalt, uh, as you like to say. A little bit like Larry Legend when he hits a three-pointer in the contest, the three-point contest, then wins. Question is, do you sing? out in public with your headphones on when other people are around? Good question. Absolutely not. I don't like to uh, create noise like that. I don't crank my music in my car if the windows are down. Uh, so, however, I was walking the other day with my headphones on and I was walking by a hedge. Nobody was around. And on my playlist was... Uh, it actually is not a playlist and it's uh, it's an old Pandora station and it plays different. It plays Hall and Oates. It plays uh, Boss Gags, Eddie Money, et cetera, uh, David Bowie. And it was playing uh, the Bee Gees Nights on Broadway. So Kilby did sing along because no one was around. I did a little falsetto and I'm sure it sounded scary. And as I get to the end of the hedges, there's a driveway and I look and there is an older woman with a dog and she looks scared and I apologize and kept moving. So you got to be really careful. I think, cause I don't know what my voice sounded like when, when she heard me doing falsetto BG's nights on Broadway. I mean, she probably called security who knows it's scary, but I'm very careful in public, uh, not making a spectacle of myself. Uh, the peace sign to people, uh, giving Craig, uh, friendly Craig, but not, uh, not singing, not yelling. Just a nice guy. Craigers, what are your thoughts on gluten-free pasta? Well, that's a great question for me because I don't eat carbs a lot. Okay. So I stopped eating pasta years ago. And, um, since there's gluten-free pasta, I will partake. And I, it's usually, uh, it's you know, like a chickpea garbanzo beans or a cauliflower pasta. Uh, some is angel hair. Uh, some is just spaghetti. Uh, but I'll put pesto sauce on there cause I have fresh basil in my garden. I know how to make pesto. I don't always use pine nuts. Sometimes I use walnuts cause I love walnuts. Um, and I'll put on, I, I actually do occasionally, because I just like it, a decent linguine convongole at home. I buy the clam juice, but this is, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say, it's not always fresh clams. It's from the can and blank, et cetera. But I just love the garlic and the white wine and putting that Parmesan cheese on there. So I'll do that sometimes, rarely. And I'll put pomodoro sauce on there. And other times I'll just do, to, I love putting garlic and tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, chopping those up, sauteing with garlic and olive oil, a little splash of lemon, and then putting that Parmesan cheese on that pasta. I just love it. I'm a good person and I like doing that. But I don't eat pasta too much. 
pick my spots. Also, you might find this embarrassing, and I'm not embarrassed. This is how I stay thin. When I go to a restaurant, I'll go to Rayo's Hollywood right over here. They have a famous one in New York. They got one over here in uh, near Hancock Park, and I'll go there, and I will say, do you have gluten-free pasta? And they say, yes, we do. I'll say, I'll have that. I don't care. I do that at, at restaurants sometimes. I'll do it. Not embarrassed at all. Not <sighs> Also, side note, I get a kick out of gluten-free pizza. You can buy it in the uh, freezer section. And they're kind of fun because I don't eat, I, I just stopped eating those kind of carbs. I would eat potatoes and fries, but I don't like the, uh, the pizza crust or the pasta. I'm disciplined that way. If I'm going to get carbs, I don't mean to yell. If I'm going to get carbs, it's going to be vodka. It's going to be vodka. <laughs> Next question. Lord Kilby, with the holiday season upon us, is it safe to say that the Life Gorgeous is a continual holiday all year round? Well, bingo. That's my whole point. There's no wrong side of the bed in my world. I noticed when I was working in television that there's a lot of bitter people. And we have a question about that coming up. And I just, I just the negativity, come on, man. I, I don't relate to it. And the life gorgeous is all about enjoying life. I like to say, enjoy the simple things in life. What's that mean, Craig? Well, eight hours of sleep. Oh, <laughs> that felt pretty good. Eight hours of sleep. And people don't believe this. But for the last 15 years, I go to bed at 9 p.m. That means I'm in bed by 7 watching some, watching Turner Classic movies, watching my Timberwolves beat your team. Beat your team. Watch the old Frasier. I haven't, you know, I'm not participating in the new Frasier. Saw the pilot episode, didn't finish it. Sorry, tough love, but I didn't like it. But I love the original Frasier. Bosch, Bosch Legacy. Uh, you know all the movies. I watch all the different, all the different stuff. But I go to bed at nine. So the simple things in life are eight hours of sleep, coffee in the morning. I listen to Bill Evans. You can listen to whatever you want. Exercise. Cooking at home, obviously Kilby goes out to eat, but you don't have to always go out to eat. And that's that's a lot of the simple things in life. Cooking at home, sleeping, coffee in the morning, positive thoughts, listening to Bill Evans. And yes, the life gorgeous is 365. Gregors, I've heard you ask this question to some of your comedy friends, but now I'm asking you, who are some of your comedy influences growing up back in Hastings, Minnesota. So my father was very funny and that kind of got me going. We used to watch Johnny Carson together. Johnny was great, but I'll give you some other ones. I think even before Johnny Carson, I watched Jackie Gleason on the honeymooners and he was hilarious. Um, there was a show in the seventies and I got to meet this guy multiple times, interviewed him. Martin Mull on Fernwood Tonight. Barth Gimble was the character he played. It was He was a talk show host, and he had uh, Fred Willard as his sidekick, Jerry Hubbard. So I loved Fernwood Tonight. It was one of my favorite shows. That was back in the 70s. Uh, and then also uh, Saturday Night Live started in the 70s. Bill Murray was the guy that jumped out for a lot of us. We think Bill's the funniest man in the world. Uh, Monty Python. We used to watch Monty Python that John Cleese got to interview him, blew me away. And, uh, I'd see Robert Klein on some talk shows. He was very funny, David Brenner, but I remember Robert Klein really made me laugh and I remembered some of his bits. So that was, uh, those are some of the names of the comedy influences back in the 1970s for a young Craigers as he was balancing basketball and comedy. That was my job. This podcast is sponsored by Every Plate. Looking to budget your food expenses this holiday season? Get more bang for your bite with America's Best Value Meal Kit. It's Every Plate. Their meals are 50% cheaper than your average fast, casual meal. 
So ditch the takeout to save money while still enjoying fresh, satisfying meals. They're the easiest way to eat affordably. Put the money you save towards making holiday plans instead. Yay! You guys craving steak? Introducing $1 Steak for Life. Add a 10 ounce ranch steak to your weekly order for just $1 per box while your subscription is active. Now that's raising the steaks for dinner. Boom. You see what I did there? (laughs) Ha ha! Make the sustainable choice this December. Every plate offsets 100% of their delivery emissions, and their meals have a 31% lower carbon footprint on average than supermarket meals of the same portion. Plus, nearly all packaging materials are curbside recyclable in most areas in the U.S., Friends, there are different meal kits out there, but every plate has a lower price with top quality food. Young Craigers just enjoyed lemony feta pork burgers, and not just on any bun, a potato bun. And guess what I did with the money I saved? Bought a nice bottle of red wine, Cabernet from Paso Robles. It's called Living. It is so satisfying getting great food, but saving money at the same time, and then shifting that money to something else like vino. I'm very proud of myself. (sighs) Ladies and gentlemen, get a meal for $1.49 plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49Kilborn. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem $1 steak. Again, get a meal for $1.49 plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering the code 49Kilborn. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem the $1 stake. That's up to a $110 value. Thank you, Everyplate, for sponsoring The Life Gorgeous. Proud of you. Dearest Lord, my girlfriend and I argue about what's a better Kilby quote. Breathe out the bitterness... Or don't chase the night. You wrote them. Which one is better? I think don't chase the night to me is more poetic. Uh, But I think it's used more infrequently because hopefully you guys don't have to remind yourself don't chase the night too often because I hope you're not going out every night, maybe once a week. And then you don't chase the night. It's just something you remember. But I do believe that breathe out the bitterness is very, very important. And you'll use it, I think, every day because there are a lot of bitter people out there. And this is one of my points in life is I don't relate to it. I worked with these people. I think their view is warped. I don't don't think they have the credibility to weigh in on a lot of issues because of their bitterness and rage. So I believe that breathe, breathe out the bitterness, sometimes I say breathe out the bitterness young people. I think it's uh, more significant, Um, so therefore it's better, because I think it's a daily motto for some people to use, because there is a lot of, uh, you know, miserable people out there. I'm Captain Positive. That's just the way life is. And this is the final one. This is a quick one. This is a quick one. Craigers. You had this freak alert story somewhere on your podcast, and I can't find it. It it involved Robert Evans. Can you repeat that question or that story? Uh, Yes, I can. Yeah, I told it on a a early, I think I was a guest on somebody's podcast, or maybe I said it on my first podcast with uh, Mr. Rosillo a a couple years ago. So it was probably around 2003. And I, uh, my then girlfriend and I, uh, were having dinner on sunset at Il Soleil, which is no longer there. It was kind of across from, uh, La Dome, but, uh, I rarely do this, but I had my back to the uh, front door. I usually face the front door wherever I sit in the restaurant, but I was facing, uh, my, my girlfriend and, uh, she said, freak alert, 12 noon, freak alert, 12 noon. So I turned around and entering the restaurant was Robert Evans and Jean-Claude Van Damme. And then they came in and they walked by me, but they sat right over at a table just across maybe five feet away. And uh, Robert Evans, who I had never met but became friends with, nodded at me. 
and said hi. And I said hi. And uh, we continued with our dinner. And then uh, my girlfriend got up to go to the ladies' room to powder her nose. And as she was away, I looked at Van Dam and I said, I want you to do something. I want you to uh, say something to my girlfriend when she sits down. I want you to whisper, hey, we met, you know, at the Four Seasons. We had a fun little afternoon up in my room. I wanted him to mess with her. So she comes back from the bathroom, sits down, and and Van Dam goes, excuse me, I don't mean to bother you, but we met at the Four Seasons, remember, up in my room. And my girlfriend goes, Craig, knock it off. Ah. Why? Because Van Damme can't act. I didn't mean to yell. Because Van Damme can't act. He didn't pull it off. It would have been so much fun. Practical joke. <sighs> okay, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Craigers. That's our show. Plenty of guests coming up in December. Stick around. We'll see you next time. And remember, young people, I'm proud of you.